<laughs> Welcome to See You in the Lobby, women's basketball's newest and least filtered podcast, uh, where we always bet on women, some of us better than others, and a different version of that statement this time. Uh, I'm WNBA writer Matt Allen Tuck. I'm here with former WNBA All Star Marissa Coleman. Welcome to the show. I'm not happy. Right Let's now. start with my now favorite segment of the show. I'm not happy. It's shot o'clock time, Marissa, and I hope that you're thirsty because Marissa is a big fat loser this week. Marissa, do you want to explain while I pour? I lost both bets this week. I mean, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I may or may not have been yep. feeling sorry for yep. you. I yep. mean, you've been taking all oh, oh. to the brim. Uh-huh. I, I lost both bets. I thought yep. Yep. Minnie was going to beat Seattle. Mm-hmm. I thought they were going to get their shit together because it was Sill's last home game. They got blown out. Matt said Sill was going to get a double-double. Sill did her part. Thank you, Sill. But, oh, man. You know what? It's actually nice to drink for a change. I'm usually parched during this segment. So. I'll, I'll, I'll sip. I'll and watch, sip. How, watch how easily I take it. I'm mm-hmm. not going to make all these faces. Yeah, that feel good. Did you like? It's delicious. You like the shot? Did you like the second one? Did you have fun Mm-mm. with that one? <laughs> <laughs> yep, there it goes. There it goes. I didn't like the second one. <sighs> I love this show. Oh, let's quick. Let's let's talk about things. Front office moves. Uh, we've 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 had a hell of a final stretch leading into the into the playoffs. I think the the first the first person we have to talk about is Skylar Diggins Smith, who is now out for personal reasons. Her contract was suspended, which means now that even the Mercury made the playoffs, she will not be playing in it. Uh, what does what does this mean for Phoenix? I mean, Phoenix has still been they've won games without both her and Diana, so I think. They are just playing to, out to prove. They're probably still playing for, for BG. It's interesting that this is all happening. We, I guess we kind of saw it unraveling and unfolding. I'm very anxious to see what happens in the offseason if she'll be a member of the Mercury next year. Yeah, a lot of questions, yet Phoenix still rolled on. They still made a final playoff seed that I don't think anybody could have really predicted was, was going to happen without their two best players. And I don't know, maybe they'll make things, so, something interesting if, if players can go off from threes, some Shea Petty threes. I don't know. And number nine, we'll see what and, she does. And well, now I have a question for you, though, Matt, yeah. um, you know, because you get to vote as a WNBA writer. Does Skylar, is she still deserving of all WNBA, that in, even though she didn't finish the season? Yeah. I mean, not, I didn't, I didn't place her on first team, but I did place her on second team. I think, um, obviously, if the format was still where we were picking guards, she would have probably been my second guard on the first team, but... Since we could pick any position, I favored forward, so I made her a second team. Skylar had a great year. It's just been it's just been a weird time. The it whole has. Phoenix Mercury season was weird. The other person we have to talk about is Tiffany Hayes, who I believe missed the last two games of the Dream season while they were in a playoff chase because she had an overseas commitment that the Dream claim kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, Tanisha Wright said that she respects her her choice, but that clearly affected Atlanta's chances of making the playoffs. I don't, I'm not necessarily buying that Tanisha didn't, didn't know this, especially with Tanisha being a former player. She understands how this goes. So for all of our fans that are watching, a lot of, w, play, <laughs> a lot of w players, they get European pas- passports so that when we play overseas, some teams only allow a certain amount of Americans. This allows a player like Tiffany Hayes, who does have a passport, to play in Turkey or wherever, and she doesn't count against that team as an American. Mm. But some stipulations that go with that, you have to compete in a certain amount of international competitions with that passport, with that team. So I'm assuming this is what happened here, and there's no way that the front office didn't know this. And then the second part to that is, a lot of these players don't feel appreciated by the W. So if I'm a Tiffany Hayes, and I'm not feel appreciated by my team, by the league, I'm, I'm going to honor that overseas commitment. Like the, the league doesn't necessarily do a good job of making, other than a handful of players, feel wanted and appreciated in this league. Where overseas, you, you feel that love, you feel that appreciation. So if I'm not necessarily feeling wanted in, my, in this league, then there's no reason for me to make the sacrifice and say, okay, you know what, this is what's more important. I'm going to go overseas and get that and get the money. And I think that is, is one of the situations here. And I think it's going to be, we talked about it in one of the early episodes. It's be interesting to see what players do now with the new uh, CBA rule That's where be a big deal. you basically have to choose overseas or choose the W. And I think a lot of people are going to choose overseas because of the money they can make. And then two, like, shoot, it's nice to have your summers off. <laughs> Well, another reason, another thing that the W could be doing better and, and would have made it more interesting end of the playoff. For sure. Uh, so again, it's, it's 
our com our common thing we've had since we started this show is the visibility in marketing more players. And if the league doesn't do something, these things are going to keep happening. And it's a simple fix. It really is. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, I want <laughs> I want Atlanta in the playoffs. Yeah. I, would, I would have taken Atlanta over Phoenix, if I'm being completely honest. Another thing we have to talk about in, in this episode. I didn't get to ring the bell yet because I didn't have to take yeah, yeah, didn't it must, have to take must be It must be a weird feeling. Chelsea Gray's behind the back pass from the three-point line is a play that will stick. Like, And it's hard for me at this point to be surprised by Chelsea Gray, but this was one where I was like, holy shit. <laughs> this is one of those plays that I was so glad I got to watch live that I didn't see it scrolling through Twitter and say Matt Allen took 3,000 million views. And seeing it, I was in bed watching. I literally said, oh shit, out loud. Because it's the degree of difficulty, I don't think people understand. To be able to make a behind the back pass in general, but to make it from the three-point line to somebody that is cutting, that has, you have to make a perfect uh, pass. Do you practice that? Or is that something no, you, that's have, you, have a, you have an instinct? That's feel. instinct. You, you can't teach that. That's, that's not you're not in workouts and you're working on that. That's just Chelsea Gray being Chelsea blank gray. <laughs> that's that's literally nuts. Um, next oh, thing I want to talk about. I love ringing that bell. Is, I let yeah, you ring it once in last my, week. Now it's your job. I'm very powerful this week. Sylvia Fowles played her last regular season game, which at uh, last career game now also as well, which we, we all know was coming. This wasn't really Minnesota season. Um, screw the refs for giving her two early fouls and like making that a whole thing. But what was really nuts about that game is Connecticut showed no mercy, right? This To, to set the stage for anyone who missed it, Connecticut did not need to win this game in the final regular season game of the season. They were going to be the, the number three seed no matter what. Minnesota had to win to have a chance at making the playoffs. And ultimately, they would have made the playoffs had they won this game. Minnesota comes crawling back once Connecticut puts the reserves in. Connecticut says, eh. Puts Alyssa Thomas and John Paul Jones back in in the last few minutes to make sure that they win the game. Um, <laughs> that was nuts. It was nuts. But you also have to think from Connecticut's perspective. Of course, sill has been great for this game. We, we all love her. But do you want to go into the playoffs with a loss? Like, you want to have that momentum. You want to be playing well. You don't want to enter your first game and, like, then you're watching film and you're saying, why did you do this, that, and the third? It's, all right. We it, like that last game of the season, it does matter in the sense of building the momentum and working on things. There might be plays he might be putting in for the playoffs, might want to try a new lineup. So it's professional sports, it's not you know, so you're not going to give anybody anybody the win. This, this is why Matt Ellen <laughs> doesn't have control over hey, this. This isn't teams. this isn't Volo <laughs> Tuesday Night Rec League, Matt. I would um, be like, everybody, let's still talk. Still's <laughs> last game, everybody come through. But it is important that last game to carry you into the playoffs. Like, no matter how, how you swing it, you don't want to lose. And then you're just competitive. So it's unfortunate that that Sill wasn't able to make the playoffs and many have made an 11 years straight and this be the year yeah, that yeah. they miss it. It's nice. And to me, I'm pretty surprised because they had they, they had the roster to do it. So like, where do you feel like they, they came up short this year? I, they have a good coach, they had the roster. What do you think it was? I mean, right at the beginning of the season, they started to tear things down like a couple games in, right? They get rid of Angel McCautry. They make a, a bunch of different roster moves. I feel like the, I don't know, it just it never felt like a cohesive season for them. They bring in Rye Jefferson, who was wonderful, but they bring her in late to the picture. Uh, Nafisa Collier comes in at the very end of the season. I think them missing her really, really hurt. I mean, she's an awesome player. Um, so it's just a weird season for many. I think it was kind of a... It, it, you know, it's a shame that, that Syl had to go out like that, but we're not going to remember Syl for this season. Oh, absolutely like, we're going to remember Syl for literally, quite, quite literally every other season she ever played in. Oh, yeah. See You in the Lobby had its first exclusive interview with Alyssa Thomas uh, to talk about how she felt about... I we're TMZ, Syl. we get exclusive. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> uh, we did talk to her about knocking Syl out of the playoffs and how she felt about it. I know, Matt, Matt has a very important question. H.E., <laughs> H.E., I have to know, I have to know. Do you feel like a little bit bad for knocking Syl out yesterday? <laughs> so just a little bit. Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I love that answer. I mean, they had all season to to make their their playoff run. So I mean, I don't I don't think I could feel bad for for the last game. Um, of course, you know it's sad to see the end of her career, but I definitely don't feel bad for for what we did yesterday. <laughs> And that's what you just said, A.T., like, that's a good point. I, that's, I think, outsiders looking in, they don't understand that. It's always magnified at the end of the season for that playoff push. This team wins that game in this way. You do your job earlier in this season, and we know, like, every season the coaches are telling you that you don't want it to come down to 
it, somebody else needing to lose for us to get in. So, I mean, that's a great point. And I don't think a lot of people realize that they had their chance. They played many, the same and, amount of games as everybody else. And many had a lot of chances yeah. that they blew throughout the year. So, yeah. No, Absolutely. I totally get yeah. that. Yeah. Definitely don't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't hate that response from it's, AT. It's true. They had their chance. They played the same amount of games as everybody else. Yep. So get your job done. And I, like, I remember like that midway point in this season. It's the coaches are always saying, we don't want our playoff hopes to ride on if this team loses, if this team wins, like on specific scenarios. Like get your job done and create your own destiny. So I mean, it's definitely unfortunate, but I, I agree with AT. Like she gave it real. Do you think bringing Nafisa back may have hurt them. No, no. Th- I mean, Nafisa wasn't Nafisa, but but she patterned the starting lineup yesterday. Yeah, I was surprised by that, I guess. But no, I mean, you I would I so? would have done it. I, I would have done it too. Yeah, I mean, I, I, when your when your team is still like middling like that, if if Minnesota had been awesome all season and then they tried to incorporate Nafisa, I would have been hesitant. But when your team's not that good, Minnesota was always the pinnacle in the W. They had all these great players, and then it's. Myas leaves, then Way, yep. then Moan, now Sale. Like what? What's next? What's next for you Minnesota? Want to know what's next for Minnesota? Here's what I'm very excited about. So obviously Minnesota losing and not making the playoffs sucks. Sucks. We all want to see Sale in there. Minnesota would have probably been a first round out. Now by losing, they have a chance to get a Leo Boston. Like they're a lottery team now. I think they have like a 17 percent chance of getting the number one overall pick. Can you think of a better transition period than moving right on from from Sill to Aaliyah? That mean that would be great. It, that's it my would, that's it the would pipe be dream. Great. It, but yeah. even still, they have they still have the pieces, right? McBride's an awesome player. Ariel Powers, Powers is an awesome player. Nafisa's only I think twenty five years old. She's still going to get better. She's an awesome player. They're gonna figure it out. I'm not that worried. Uh, another question for you? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no more no more questions. Um, now it comes to. Matt's very public meltdown as we go over all of the <laughs> award votes uh, that needed to be submitted. You, uh, you've had a whole week now. Because you last week when I put you on the spot, you couldn't give me your all WBA first game. Yeah, now, yeah. I'm, ready, I'm ready to fight about it a little. So I put a lot, a lot of thought and sweat and tears into this, okay? Mm-hmm. All okay. right, I'm going to announce my all W first team. Okay, let's cheers to it first. Cheers to it before you get really pissed at me because I know <laughs> where you're going to get pissed at me. <laughs> Okay, Matt's team. Asia Wilson is number one, obvious. Brianna Stewart, number two, also very obvious. Kelsey Plum, three, did not hesitate, obvious. Number four was Alyssa Thomas, and I felt good about. Number five was Candace Parker. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got to convince me on that one. You have to convince me Here's on that one. Here's the thing. One. Here's what I really struggled with. Chicago is an awesome team tied for the best record in the entire league, right? Vegas won by a tiebreaker. Chicago is so well balanced, so it's very hard to target like most valuable in overall. I don't know. It, it's very hard to target who should who deserves the most credit. But Candace has been the common denominator of so many competitive teams, and I know that her points per game are only what like 13 points this year, so that feels a little low. But her contribution on both ends of the court and how teams have to defend Chicago differently because Candace is there, the way she gets her teammates involved. The way she steps up defensively when the team needs it, to me, that's what solidifies. Did it. you just say the way she steps up defensively? Yeah. Yes. When when her team needs it, she's there. They gotta revoke this man's <laughs> WNBA voting. His credentials all the way. I, I, I Candace buy it. is a great player. She is one of the best this game will ever see. But she was not a first team player this year. So who do you disagree with my team besides Candace? I would and who do you swap Candace you? and Skyler. I agree with everybody else, but I would swap okay. Candace and Skyler. That's fair. I had Skyler on my second team. So, like, I wouldn't hate it. Would you have had Candace on your second team? Oh, absolutely. Like, oh, Candace is, right. she's an so all WNBA all. team. I just don't think not that, this year's first team. Off. We're not that And then off. you put all the factors in. Like, Skyler put up crazy numbers this year. She did. And with all of the, the noise and um, attention they were getting because of the, obviously, everything that's going on with BG and then. <laughs> I mean, we, we know all that's going on. Yeah. And and I think Skylar was very, very consistent. Um, so I would swap those two out. That's fair. Skylar had a great year. But okay, Chica- I, you, dude, you, Chicago was awesome. Chicago we got to dig awesome deeper year. into this. She shows up defensively. Please, please she tell does. me. She does. She does. So were you one of the ones that voted her defensive player of the year? No, no. I did not vote her that. 
But she was good. She was good enough defensively that I'm not gonna like. Good her. enough. Good enough. There's a lot of good enough okay. defenders right. out there. All right. You know what? You're good Matt, enough in Volo League. <laughs> you know what? You know what? But Matt, I'm not going you first Matt, team all, all Matt, defense. Matt already cries every time he submits his ballot because he feels like he accidentally slighted a bunch of people <laughs> who he respects. So, um, let's move on to MVP, which. A really good, healthy debate this year. I really, I think you could make an honest campaign for either Brianna Stewart or Asia Wilson. You can support it in a million different ways, and I would believe that you buy into whoever your pick is between those two. I let you start in which player would, would you pick for that award and why? I'm going with Asia. I think she's been super consistent this season. That she leaves the league in double doubles or second. A lot of the conversations like she has the great pieces around her, but it still takes a lot to play that consistent at that high, high level. And Asia has elevated the play of everybody else. Asia makes Kelsey's job easier. She makes uh, Chelsea's job. She makes everybody on that team's job easier. And I, she, they're they're the number one team. They've they're the number one overall uh, seed. I think they've just been consistent. She's been dominant. You've seen her game go to another level. She's added, you know, like she's, she's shooting better. She's shooting the three. But to your point, it's close. Has the league ever had co-MVPs? No, I don't think so. And we know the league's never going to do no, that. No, we're not going to do The W's going to I would, I'd be mad but, about that anyway. Someone's got to win it. No, I because what was the, the year of the NBA? Was Steve Nash and who? They, they, oh, no, no, no. They did the, like, they gave Co-rookie them, of the year. Yeah, I don't Whatever they did. Some garbage. Um, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Asia. I think Vegas has just been too hot this season. She's been too yeah. consistent. She's been the leader of that team. But to your point, like you can't be mad at either. They're both great players. No. They both are great. This, and I, I sweated it out a lot. I, I ultimately, I went with Asia Wilson as well and I feel good about it. I feel especially good about it after the way they, they closed out the regular season. But even before that, I think I, I knew I was probably gonna pick her anyway. Like Vegas is historically good offensively. And I think that's something that we've probably forgotten just because they got off to such a hot start and then they cooled down a little bit. And then we were like, eh, like maybe the Aces have other competitors. But no, the A's were really freaking good all year. Like one of the best offenses ever. And like you said, Kelsey and Jackie are having years they've never had before in part because Asia improved on her game so much. And one of our, one of my or our like biggest criticisms of Asia's game was like, she doesn't have a three point range, right? And that's gonna, that, that makes every, like that makes the entire offense swell into the paint a little more. But she had like 37% of her threes <laughs> this year on a really healthy rate, which is really important. She's also a phenomenal defender. So I picked Asia Wilson, and uh, I felt really good about it. Yeah, I think a lot of people, like, it, get lo- it gets lost in the conversation when it's like, oh, well, they have X amount of all-stars around them. X amount of, Stewie has X amount of all-stars around her. Yeah, but again, like I said, Asia's making those jobs easier. Like, she's elevating their game. So Kelsey being an all-star, Asia made her a superstar this year. Superstar. Like, Jackie having just, you know, on the cusp of, of greatness. Now she, she's an all-star because yep. of Asia. Like, yep. she elevated everybody's games this year. I felt good about it. Let's move on to most improved player, which I think is another award that's going to be very split. I saw in uh, Just Women's Sports did their anonymous poll, and I think two players were tied with the same amount of votes. And I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. I went with my most improved player being Jackie Young instead of Kelsey Plum being the alternative, because I think both of them are, are probably worthy candidates. But Jackie Young exploded this year on both ends of the floor. I never thought she was going to be a three-point shooter, and now she was a really good three-point shooter. She's dribbling more confidently than she ever had before. She's finding her mid-range game better than she ever did before. She's a really solid defender. She, she just looks like a whole complete different player, so she was my MIP. It's not a, not a bad choice, but of course, I'm... I'm going with Kelsey for for are. MIP. I, I, I mean, she's had an amazing season. She had a 700 point, 700 plus point scoring season. By the way, did did you see her and Asia, the only duo in WNBA history, yeah, it's to nuts. have like it's insane. So you put her shooter percentage is great. Like she's hit clutch shots. I I, I think for me it's hands down her MIP. Just the confidence she's playing with. She looks like a different player. Um. But what like what are your like what are your your metrics in deciding that? I looked at the numbers and decided that Kelsey's bump was a little more based on like minutes, whereas Jackie just transformed her game entirely. Um, I think Kelsey was always going to be that player. I always thought Kelsey was going to become this. Did player. you really? Totally. I mean, after the, the way in which she dominated at Washington was just you knew that type of player was going to find her footing. 
I was not a Jackie Young believer. I think I was very shocked when she was the number one pick uh, in the draft. I was kind of, after her first, even her rookie year, I was like, is she really a W player? Um, it's, it, she's just, she's completely different. She, she's blown me away. I mean, she's an all-star. Uh, I had her on my all W second team. Uh, I didn't see this jump coming for Jackie. Fair enough. Good thing your vote counts and not mine. <laughs> Final pick, defensive player of the year. Going with my fellow Terp. Yeah, you went with her? Little 2-5 is what I like to call her. I'm going with yep. AT. I think AT doesn't get the, the credit she deserves. She's another player that needs to be talked about more. Agreed. She's top five in, I think, rebound, steals, and assists. <laughs> like, yep. And probably top 10 in scoring. I don't think she gets talked about enough. And she guards one through four. Four, one through five sometimes. Coming off, I mean, she came back last year from her Achilles in- injury and then came back this season even more dominant. I and mean, she's tasked with doing a lot. If you think about all she does for that team and then she's an elite defender, I'm definitely, she's my defensive player of the year. Awesome player. I think defensive player of the year, you, you could make an argument, I think, for four players. Asia Wilson's one, John Cole Jones is two, AT is three, and the one I picked, I went, I went with Brianna Stewart. Oh. Candace Parker isn't in there? I didn't say she was the <laughs> best defensive player. I'm just saying, man. She's got defensive juice. Anyway, I picked Stewie. I feel good about that one as well. I, I feel like she really does carry a lot of the, lo- the, the defensive load. And she can do a lot like AT can in guarding multiple positions. Uh, really considered AT. She probably my, my runner-up would, would be AT. Um, but I feel pretty good about that one. I'm not mad at that pick because I do think she's an underrated defender. Yep. I think people look at Stewie and they don't think... Of her, but she is seven long. foot arms. She is super long, seven and she, foot arms. she's deceivingly quick. So I'm yeah. not, I'm not mad at your pick, yeah. but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with AT. I, I think she, she deserves it. We had a tweet from Tarika about how the WNBA should have a comeback player of the year award, and I agree. I agree too. I agree. I think there are times. <laughs> We give out awards to the NBA players that support us yeah, the most, we're like, we're but like, we can't get a comeback We're like, did you guys see the time Chris Paul wore that hoodie? Um, <laughs> Him and Devin Booker are always court they, that. they deserve an award. They go to the games. <laughs> Isn't that sick? Um, no, I think Comeback Player of the Year would be an awesome award. There are so many players who have overcome injury and beyond. I mean, Diamond to Shield story is still completely nuts to me. The fact that My she, mind was blown watching fa- that outside that, the line. That she is on a basketball court, and not just on a basketball court, she's still a really damn good player after all that. That's nuts. I think Diamond should be should be rewarded. I, got, I literally just got goosebumps thinking about that, it's, that it's nuts. outside the lines. I, to, to see that she couldn't walk in her relearning motor skills, to be back on the court, like That's amazing. I think the W should also want to prop up its players for overcoming incredible odds, right? Like, do yourself a little bit of PR. I mean, that's too much like right, so. (laughs) One quick break. I would like to just stare into the camera and apologize to three (laughs) individuals because I can't stress enough that, like, the entire voting process tears (laughs) me to shreds and I feel incredible guilt the minute I hit submit and then I have to text other people in the industry to be like, who did you pick? Who did you pick? Like, is that okay? Is what I did fine? Um, I've second guessed myself 3,000 times, but I want to specifically apologize to the following people. One, Gabby Williams. I am so sorry. You should absolutely be an all on an all defense team. The positions screwed you over. I couldn't not include any of the forwards I talked about before. And you aren't a guard. I would have absolutely made you a guard and put you on this team. Number two, Kelsey Plum, I'm so sorry. You had a ridiculous season, scoring in ways that we always knew you could, um, but now you finally did it. I couldn't put you up there for MVP. I, I placed you third there, and I didn't give you MIP, and there's just no other award to give to you. But I, I wanted to give you one. And no, <laughs> here. <laughs> here. Another tiny Actually, trophy for I'll you. I'll be around. Here, again, it's heavy. It's heavy. Um, this is your award from, from me and Marissa, because you did great. And... The third person I'd like to apologize to is Tanisha Wright because I so wanted to give you Coach of the Year. Um, Yeah, everyone's mad about it. Um, I really think Tanisha Wright was a great candidate for Coach of the Year. Uh, I would not blame anybody for voting for her. I I, I couldn't take a a sub-500 team who didn't make the playoffs and give Coach of the Year. I went with Becky Hammond, and I feel great about giving it to Becky. But Tanisha, you deserve props. You had an incredible season uh, that none of us thought you'd have. 
And that's my spiel. Matt's really sorry, guys. I'm really sorry. I, I swear he's a, a he, He's a good guy. Forgive him, please. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Can I ring the bell? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I didn't get to ring it much today. Uh, let's talk about uh, playoff matchups. Playoff. Let's run through it. All right. Which one are you most excited for? It's Storm Mystics by Same. far. By far. Same. All right. Who, you, who do you have? Storm. Storm, I do too. What, do you, what, what matchup are you most looking forward to and what are your X factors in the series? Oh, uh, I want to see Elena playing without mental restriction, right? Because the whole year she had been playing games knowing I'm going to sit this one. I can only give 50% in this scenario. I can only give 70% in this scenario. It's the playoffs now. So mm -hmm. she has to go 100% and she has to feel good about going 100%. So I'm very excited for the Elena Stewie matchup because those are two of the best in the world. I agree. That's going to be good. I think Stewie, Deladon, they're going to cancel each other out. I think a lot of a lot of people are going to cancel each other out. Stew and Cloud are going to cancel each other out. For me, I think it's going to come down to what Gabby and um, Clark are able to do. I, I'm, Interesting. I'm, 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 they're, I don't want to say they have similar games, but they have similar roles. And with their teams, I think it's going to come down to the role players in this series. I say we, we spit quick. And let me know what your predictions are for, for each series. We'll go back and forth. Let's do it. Out of three games, Sky versus Liberty. Who wins by and what's the series? Sky. Sweep. Yeah, it's a sweep. Yeah, I have a Sky sweep the as well. Liberty only, they need, if the stars align, they have their crystals and they're praying to the gods. That might be it. <laughs> they're, like, no. they're like, Sabrina, you know those games where you just magically are the best shooter of all time? Right. Those. We right. need those right when now. When Johannes is shooting one-legged step back <laughs> three, that. that shit was that sick. That was insane. I mean, listen, there, there's like a, a pipe dream in which Benajah Laney is now back and now she's the Benajah that was last year. It's not happening, Matt. There's there's, there, there's no chance. There, There is no chance, but I wish them well. I'm happy that they at least made it. Sun versus Wings. Connecticut. In, in I hesitated, but Connecticut. So you think it goes three games? I want to say this that this is the year Connecticut is going to get over that hump, but you just you can't trust them. They're not trustworthy. <laughs> I, they, they need to they need to prove. They they they, they, they have they have to make me a believer. I mean, they have it on paper. They're a great team. Dallas Wings, first of all, you're you're fan. They're they're ruthless and they're Very all on ridiculous. this the Rike don't come back train i'm against i think she needs to come back but they have been playing without her i can't deny that i wonder if tierra mccowan's going to be an issue i say it goes three games as well but i do think the sun win it i mean, the sun definitely win it but it's going to go three games and this one feels a, a little too obvious aces mercury next <laughs> do do we want to go into our bets but before we do that i'm gonna put you on the spot <clears throat> Who's your champion? We're doing that now. Yeah, I, I'm putting you on the spot before the playoffs start. We're doing that now. I'm, I want I you had to make to go a point into that a camera and predict. apologize to three people so who do don't know again. I exist do that again. I didn't vote for them. Do it again. I'm putting you on the spot right now. Ready? Go. Go. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I like a brief Let's explanation. Stop! Stop! You know, stalling. Let's go. The Chicago Sky. I think the Chicago Sky have an easier path to the finals because they play, sorry, Connecticut. They play <laughs> Connecticut in the semis if everything goes chalk. Seattle and Vegas, I'm more hesitant on because either of those teams could come out of it. I won't be surprised if any of Seattle, Vegas, or Chicago wins. I think Chicago has an easier route, so I'm picking Chicago. Okay, I'll take it next. Okay, but now you have to go. No, 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 it was my game. <laughs> what the hell is this? It was my game. You're actually not going to respond. All right. I, I want, I, I, a part of me wants to say the storm. I just, the way Jewel's been playing. Jewel's awesome. And with Stewie, I mean, you can't ever, but my brain's telling me the aces. I just, I don't know if anybody can, can beat them in a series. We're waiting to see about Dierica. That might change. All right, our, our grand finale here. Mm -hmm. Let's give our bets for our featured game on Thursday, which will actually be this this Mystic Storm series, which I think will be the best series of all. All right, I'm gonna go with my X factors between Gabby and um, AC, Alicia Clark. I think Gabby is going to outscore and out-rebound AC. Ooh, okay, I like that. A little, little under the radar flow. I'm gonna go with my favorite player. And I like to go big. Ezzy Magbagor will block three shots. Three shots? We'll block three shots on Thursday. Thanks for watching. Yeah. It's we gonna be an exciting playoffs. <laughs> Tune in. Matt and I are going to recap playoff games. We're going to yeah, we're gonna go hard. preview we're gonna, playoff games. Matt's gonna take some more shots. I gave I him the day will, off, yeah. but it's gonna be a fun playoffs. Alright, well find us on 
this YouTube account, so maybe some Twitter spaces in the yeah, near future. Yeah, follow us. Um, I don't know. Like, thanks for coming or whatever. <laughs> Bye.